Sewing in collections is nothing new. I mean, it's something that fashion designers have been doing for many, many, many decades, if not over a century now but it is something that I came across and started really appreciating in the sewing side of things when I discovered Emily Hallman on Instagram. I absolutely loved her method of sewing. She tended to do it in collections. They were colour based and she had very similar tastes in the prints that she liked that I did as well so it was something that it was just like oh wow that's amazing that's such a clever way of putting things together why have I never thought of that and so some of my capsule co <laughs> capsule collections were born now I previously have tried this a couple of times I don't think any of them have ever been particularly successful because I have got carried away with the pretty pretty prints and not made any of the solids or anchoring foundation pieces that would then tie everything in together I still have those fabrics and when I do eventually make them up <laughs> they're gonna go straight into my wardrobe because they will work so well with all the pretty pretty prints that I have made and bought in the past but I think this time round I have put together a collection that's actually going to be something that number one works number two that I'm excited to sew and number three is varied enough that I don't get bored and want to veer off onto other tangents that's definitely a problem that I have had in the past so this is going to be a project that goes over at least the next sort of three months if not longer I thought I would show you how I decided to put these pieces together and how I decided to make the pieces that I am going to make. Knowing all the things that I know now about my preferences for the type of clothes that I like to wear, the shapes that I want to wear, the colours that suit me and the pieces that I already have in my wardrobe and how I can hopefully cohesively fit all these new things in with all of, not maybe not all of them, but with some of the older pieces that I've made as well. So as the title suggests, I needed a starting point, and for me that is the Lady McElroy Anaconda Antithesis print. I absolutely love the Lady McElroy snaky prints, and this one is different to Cobra Corsage. It doesn't have the stag beetles and bugs that are on the Cobra Corsage print, but it does have a selection of winged things, which I think are predominantly butterflies, but there are a number of winged things on this and a couple of different types of snakes. What I really liked about this one is the base colours and I have it on two of those base colours although a little bird has told me that they probably will be releasing the sage colourway again around April time and possibly even on a viscose which might be working its ways into my plans. Who knows? We all know. You, you, you know you know. <laughs> I know I know. It'll, it'll be in there. So once I have picked the print that I want to work on, I then need to go through and pick out some of the colours that I want to focus on. You can go through your actual focus fabric. Focus fabric is something I've heard in quilting terms and I, li I like the term so I'm applying it here. But once you've picked your focus fabric, you want to have a look at the colours in there. I really like this one. The background colour works really well for me. It is a spring blue. It's a lighter side of spring blue, but it is a spring blue and it has these beautiful pops of yellow in it. I mean we can see that I've gone for the yellow thing. So we've also got some greens, we've got some brown and tan colours, obviously there's a variety of blues and then the creamy almost ivory shades that are going on in here as well. So this is actually a really versatile print and has lots of different things that you can pair it with. As you can see behind me here I have gone predominantly for the yellows, the creams and the blues although I do have a little bit of green to add in there and I'm not ruling out adding a little bit more green to this collection over time because as I say the sage colourway may be making an, a reappearance later on this year. I absolutely love the planning stage and I also have Canva. I have the paid for subscription to Canva but the, you can use the free Canva app and it will work just as well. I went through and picked out the colours that I really wanted to feature and these were colours that I could detect in the print and that gives me like a palette to work from. You could limit this to all of the blues, all of the greens, the yellows, whichever one you want. I'm just extra and I'm going to do all of them. You can also just start off with focusing on one particular colour range from your print 
in and then add to it over time, which is probably a much more reasonable way of doing something like this. Now that I have all those colours picked out, my next thing that I did was to go through my stash, which as we can see is very giant, go through my stash and pick out all the different pieces that would work in with the colours that I've selected and the fabric that I've selected. Once I've pulled out all of those pieces, I've then taken photos of them and I've put them together on this board here. Now for me, <laughs> for me, polka dots, stripes and checks or ginghams are classed as a neutral. I think that they work really really well with prints. There are some scale th issues that you want to think about. I am no expert at print clashing but I have heard and applied a large print with a small print work really well together. A large print and a medium print can work in certain circumstances with certain types of print. Exam for example these polka dots I would say are a medium sized print. Then medium and small can work together as well. So so all three in one outfit might be a little bit much but again I am no print clashing expert so you pick what works for you and the things that you like and the things that you are drawn to. I also have different textures in here. I've got some twills, I've got some cotton lawns, I have brushed cotton, I've got some knit fabrics, some very chunky knit fabrics, I have a couple of different types of denim. I'm hopefully as I mentioned going to have some viscose in the print as well although I do have some plain viscoses in here. I also have some suiting fabrics as well. So I've got a range of different different types of fabrics for different types of garments as well as the different prints and then solids that will go in with the original focus fabric. So I think I've got quite a well rounded base here and I can imagine mix and matching most of these pieces. Now there will be some pieces that probably will look better together than others but I'm very happy with this palette that I have to work from and I think it's going to be really fun creating outfits once all the pieces are finished. Once I picked my fabrics out and put the pictures up onto Canva, then working out exactly what I wanted to make from those pieces and how they were going to fit together. And I actually found it very useful to be able to have a look at the different kind of boards that I'd made for each of the pieces that I am contemplating for this capsule collection. Now we know I like to wear dresses, I don't wear separates very often, I like layering things, so whilst I don't really want to make a lot of tops and shirts because I don't wear them very often, I do have quite a few and I'm making quite a few skirts for this collection because hopefully I've planned ahead enough that I will be able to layer them over some of the other dresses so that it looks like I have a shirt or a top when it's actually a dress that is being worn as a layering piece. I've also tried to include some outerwear, I've tried to include some knit pieces or cover-up pieces because my go-to uniform as it were tends to be a dress, a cardigan with boots or ballet flats. Sometimes heels if I'm going out but that does tend to be the thing that I gravitate towards the most. So I basically went onto the internet, found patterns that I've either made or want to try. I've got the line drawings for those whenever possible. I've saved the picture, uploaded it to Canva so that I can create these kind of planning mood boards as it were. Actually seeing all these pieces together I do think that I have a fairly well-rounded collection here. I've got comfies, I've got layering pieces, I've got dresses, I've got outerwear. I have I think covered all of my bases. These are the full anaconda antithesis types of fabric that I have. This is the Lena Crepe in the Dawn colorway. This is the Marley Cotton Lawn in the Dawn colorway. This is the Candice Drill in the Dawn colorway. And then this is the Marley Cotton Lawn in the Buttermilk colorway. So I've got my colors out from my All About the Outfit color wheel from when I had my colors done. And as you can see, it's the, the background colors are these kind of mute more muted tones here. It isn't maybe as bright and vibrant as some of these spring colours but this is something that I've had in my stash for a very long time. I am going to make it work for me by picking out some of the brighter colours like some of these yellows and some of the greens. Hopefully make this actually work for me. I'm really excited about this collection and I do think I can tie it all together and make it work for a spring palette. So the Lena Crepe. I am going to be lining a coat and I already have lined a coat with this. I'm going to be lining the Sorrento jacket in this bright yellow cotton drill that I got from Dalston Fabrics. 
looks. I will link to as much of this as I can in the description down below. Now this yellow is very kind of like day glow fluorescent yellow. It's a very very bright color and it's probably brighter than the yellows in this but I think it works together. It's definitely a very spring color. I have plans to make a skirt, a Sorrento jacket and a waistcoat with this. I've got three meters of it. I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous and as I say this is the polyester lena lining so I don't like wearing this next to my skin directly but as a lining for a jacket like this it's going to work really well. I will use something more slippery for the sleeves. I've already lined up my cream coat with this. I have also cut out and nearly finished sewing a three-quarter circle skirt which I've lined with a viscose maracane so that I have a natural fiber next to my skin but I still get the floatiness of the polyester leaner lining. I bought this fabric before they started doing this on when well, they haven't yet bought this out on a viscose but this is the floatiest of the fabrics that they bought this out on and I do like floaty fabrics as skirts. I have also said many many times that I don't actually enjoy wearing prints on my bottom half if I'm not wearing exactly the same print on the top half but I'm planning on making some shirts that will match this. I also really like how this polka dot for example goes with this and I think with a chunky belt which I do have these two are going to look really really lovely together especially when worn with one of my favorite cardigans. It's a look that I think I'm really going to like. So that's my plans for the polyester crepe. I had three meters of this tan and cream colored polka dot viscose. I have cut out a half circle skirt and a 9006 Vogue drape neck top from this fabric. I only have enough left here to make some bias binding which I probably will do. I think that's going to look very very nice worn together again probably with a belt so it will look like a dress and then those two pieces are going to be interchangeable to be worn as ex for example this top with this skirt it's going to look really really cute and it's going to be something that I enjoy wearing. The Marley Cotton Lawn in the blue dawn colorway I'm planning on doing a KB grey dress so a strappy sundress with it. I'm probably thinking a tiered and gathered skirt and because I have five meters I should have enough to make a little tie front shirt as well so that can make it a more covered up piece. The shirt will then be able to be worn with the leaner lining skirt. I can also wear it with the polka dot skirt. I will also be able to wear it with the little cardigan that I'm going to make. It's the McCall's 7829 and I actually have three fabrics to make that cardigan with. They are all from Pound Fabrics. I actually got this sample from Minerva. It's exactly the same fabric and from Minerva this is £30 a metre. From Pound Fabrics this is £12.99 a metre. There aren't as many colours available on Pound Fabrics as there are on Minerva but the price difference is significant. I've got two metres so I should have enough to possibly colour block my Rigel Bomber jacket which I will be making out of this tan Ponty Roma. I'm also going to be making some jogging bottoms from this. That's part of my Make 9 plans. I really like how these all look together. I will be able to wear the little tie front shirt with the jogging bottoms and the little shrug cardigan that goes over the top. I think that's going to look really really nice. I also have from the yellow side of things some yellow polka dots which again they're going to work really well with this shrug. I really like how they look with the Marley Lawn. I'm making a shirt dress and a skirt and a top from this so again it's going to be really really interchangeable. I think it's going to look really nice and I love how the this this just combination here looks together so I have that one from the yellow side of things. The final yellow piece I have is this gold and mustard double gauze that I got from Higgs and Higgs. I have three meters of this. I don't know what I'm going to make with this one yet and it's actually not on my Canva mood board but it goes so so well with the Anaconda Antithesis print and also the knit that I'm going to be making the shrug with so I couldn't not include it even though I'm not 100% sure what I want to make with this one yet. I'm thinking about playing around with the Pleiades dress again so that it can be worn as a layering piece but I'm not 100% sure what this one will be as yet but I do think it ties in really nicely with all the colours here and as I mentioned earlier I bought three meters of the Candace drill to make trousers but I just don't wear 
wear trousers and I really don't like wearing print on my bottom half. So this one is going to be turned into a pinafore dress, probably the 9345. Again, so this one can be then layered over the polka dot shirt dress. It can be layered over some of the t-shirts that I'm planning on making. I have got some viscose jersey in a cream mull fabric and I've also got some cotton jersey here which I'm going to be making a basic t-shirt out of. I've got things like the Adrian tee, the sew over at Kalnick tee, I've got the Gable tee and I also plan on doing some fudging with those patterns to kind of like add some interesting ruching and different details onto the t-shirts so that they're not just the plain bog standard boring t-shirts because if they were I probably wouldn't end up making them. So I really like how this looks with this and then again with that over the top I think that's going to look really really lovely. And if you've watched my what I made in January video this is all I've got left of the cream wool but I have already made a wool coat to go with this collection. Obviously that's going to be applicable until probably maybe mid-May sometime in June in the UK if I get to wear this coat or not but again I think it looks really lovely with this and I have lined that coat with the Lena lining of this colorway so it's all going to tie in nicely with each other that's the plan and then this is the buttermilk colorway again I have five meters of this and whenever I buy a Lady McElroy cotton lawn I always tend to think I know I'm going to make an 8577 and I am going to make an 8577 with this colorway and I will have enough left over to make another cropped tie front shirt which is going to go really well with the previous skirts that I've shown you. It'll be fun to wear this one with the skirt that I'm going to make. It will be nice to have those two I think and then have the cropped cardigan over the top. Obviously because we've got it literally the same colours in this print as we do in this print just the background is different. All of the other pieces that I've mentioned are going to go really nicely. So we've got the brown polka dots that's going to be a really nice combination we've got the yellow polka dots again that's a lovely combination I really like how those look together I know polka dots and prints are not for everybody but it is one of my favorite things to do and as well as polka dots I also very much enjoy stripes so I have from the green side of things this striped chambray that actually works also with savannah so when I finally get this made up it's going to go really nicely with some of the savannah pieces that I've made. I'm planning on making a shirt dress with this and it is a shirt dress that I've made previously and it has some interesting yoke details on it so it's got a yoke over the hips. I made it in a khaki colour which is nice but doesn't really suit me so I've given that one to my sister-in-law and I'm going to play around with the stripe placement on the different pieces of that dress. I think it's going to be quite interesting and again as long as I think about the skirt length of this dress and then the skirt length of the separates which I have, as long as I make those slightly longer than the skirt of this shirt dress I will be able to layer the skirts over the top and wear those together so again I think that combination looks really nice together and again it, we're playing with textures as well as colors here colors and, and prints here so that's something that's really interesting to play with and think about is the different textures that you're going to use so I really like this all together I think it's really really interesting and it's going I'm really excited about wearing these pieces together I think it's going to look really cool I think this stripe is going to work in really well with other of the pieces that I'm planning and then as I mentioned gingham. So this is a slightly darker bottle green gingham and it brings out the bottle green that you've got in the prints there. I also really like it with the blue. I think these look great together and again wearing like the bright pop of yellow that's going to really bring it back to like a spring colour palette for me. I also have plans if you look at the mood board for the majority of these pieces to have v-necks or revere collars so that whatever necklace I'm wearing which is why I would like a new chunky gold necklace will be kind of like the closest thing to my face and hopefully help balance out some of the more muted colours which I do appreciate this print has but I really like that together. I really like that together and then I've also got this sage green knit that I got from Pound Fabrics. I got it in this sage green and then I also got it in sky blue. I really again like this texture with the smoothness of the cottons. I think it's really pretty. I'm going to go through the blues in a little bit more detail because 
there are far more blues than there are anything else but all of these greens together i really like this combination i think this is really interesting again this is going to be a shirt dress of some description probably and i have the pattern listed as the 7974 i think that's going to look really really pretty because there are some gathering details on that dress as well which is going to be interesting with the gingham so again when you're planning this sort of thing out you want to think about the fabric you have and how that's going to affect the final dress that you make i've made the 7974 predominantly in floaty viscoses which i love but i have made a couple in a cotton poplin and those ones i have done sleeveless because i don't like the structure of like a cotton like this in a bigger or floatier sleeve so this one will be sleeveless but i will be able to wear it with my t-shirt underneath of it and then the little shrug that I'm going to make out of this over the top. I have three meters of this one so I might be able to get some kind of a top out of this as well which I would really like because I love the idea of like a top out of this wearing it with the skirt. It's going to be the blue skirt not the green not this one because this is going to be a dress and a shirt. So top skirt and little shrug over the top or maybe that shrug over the top. I really like that collection together as well. This is something that I do when I pick fabrics for a collection like this. I will take them out and then lay them over each other and then lay kind of like other ones over the top and see how they all work together because I don't want to create a piece that is something that's only going to work with one thing. I want these to try and be as flexible as possible with each other. I already, as we know, have a full wardrobe of lots and lots of loud in your face prints but these other pieces this sort of thing is going to work really well with a lot of those other prints this was particularly bought for the savannah collection so it's going to be nice to get it finally made up and it will work with anaconda antithesis as well as savannah which is going to be really fun so that's all the tans yellows greens and creams that i'm talking about this in and of itself is a capsule collection you'll notice here that the majority of these are reading as solids even these two I, whilst I appreciate they are prints this is definitely the one that is reading as like the the biggest print because it is but I do think that that collection in and of itself looks great together which I'm already really excited about but the predominant color that I've gone for is the blues and I have a lot of blues <laughs> a lot of blues first up we have this really bright blue which again you can't really see this exact color in this print but I think it works quite nicely together because it is so bright. This is a viscose maricane. I have five meters of it. It's one of the ones that I plan on doing something with embroidery on to kind of tie in to the print that we've got here. It might be blue on blue embroidery. It could be bright yellow embroidery but again I will be testing that out before I commit to anything. I quite like the idea of having a few solid dresses in the collection even if they do have embroidery on them. I think it's just it's something that I don't have a lot of because I don't wear it often but I do wear it and I do enjoy it and it will look really good underneath some of the layering pieces like the pinafore dresses of which I have a couple and also some of the skirts over the top of this are going to look really cool as well. I love that combination together as well. I'm this this is going to feature a lot <laughs> we've got another solid blue viscose jersey that's going to be a couple of t-shirts i have two meters of all of my viscose jerseys so this one is going to probably end up being something like the adrian with some big sleeves i think that's going to look really gorgeous worn under the pinafore dress of this print then these are some scraps or leftover fabrics that i've got in my stash this one I had enough to make the Bruyere shirt and I think also it might have even been a dress at one point but I've got enough left over to make something like a cropped shirt or the Anatole. This is another weight of chambray and again it has previously been a couple of different types of tops. I really like how they go with this. I also like how they look with the cream version of this print. They were just something that I had in the stash and was like oh yeah that could work and I am planning on doing different tops with these ones some more stripes again this is a very kind of like bright blue but i do like the two of those together this is a very lovely weight shirting fabric that i got from all your textiles on the gold hawk road specifically to make a bruyere shirt with which i am quite excited about and again that's going to be a great layering piece i love how it looks with the yellow i've put the green away but it looks really good with the green as well so very excited about that one then we've got another stripe this one is 
is the Robert Kaufman Railroad Denim, which actually has a lovely amount of stretch in it. I have this one down to be made into another pinafore dress because I do think it's going to look lovely layered over some of the other shirts and things that I'm going to be making. For example, this is another Robert Kaufman cotton flannel that I've had in the stash for a very, very long time with the intention of making a Breweria shirt because of the sample garment that they made up. I saw it and couldn't get it out of my head. So I think these two layered over each other are going to look really cool, especially with a little cardigan like possibly this one worn over the top of that. I have two and a half meters of this railroad denim. It is available to buy. It is incredibly expensive. So I'm hoping that I can make do with what I have. I'm also, as I've mentioned a few times, planning on investing in some of the Riccardi lawn of this print when it comes out. Those dresses, at least one of them, is going to be a 9345 with the big bishop sleeves, which underneath this is going to look awesome. Yeah, this is another layering piece. Although, if I finish the dress, and I will finish the dress in a nice way, it can also be worn by itself, or with t-shirts, or with just a shrug over the top. So, yeah, brushed cotton flannel for Bria shirt. Very excited to finally get round to doing this one. This was another really expensive fabric which is still available. This is called Mammoth, I think the name of this check, and you can still get this. I think it's something like £25 a metre though, so it's not inexpensive. This one is the one that I will definitely be using the coconut shell buttons on, as is this one if I don't go for self-covered buttons with this one. I might even maybe do gold press studs with this one that could look cute or maybe gold buttons but you get the idea like I'm trying to think of ways of tying in the gold element to all of these pieces we have that knit from earlier that you saw again from Pound Fabric so I will list this down below I really like how this looks with this I also really like how it looks over this and I think it's going to be a very versatile piece because it's a shape that I really like wearing and it's a colour that I really like wearing. We've got another viscose jersey this time in a darker denim blue again I think this is going to be really really lovely worn under the pinafore dress of this it's going to work really well with the stripe that you saw previously that yellow I love this yellow again I think this is going to be a very versatile piece this will also work really well with a lot of other pieces that I have in my collection that I've already made so this is going to be a great t-shirt to finally get made up then we have my Darley Dale denim that I got from Lady McElroy is kind of like this geode print it's absolutely gorgeous and it has all of the colors from this print in it this is going to be a waistcoat and a skirt again it's going to be a great layering piece that will go with all the solids yellow goes with everything <laughs> I love these two together. I think these are both very large prints. Whilst this one's abstract, this one has definitely got some definition to it, which is why I think these two large prints work together. I'm not sure if that's the technical rule because there are some print clashing rules but I like how these look together so I'm excited to wear this skirt with a sh the little crop tie front shirt that I'm going to make from the leftovers of this one I think that's going to look really cool the darkest viscose jersey that I have which is definitely like a French navy I love this color I really like this color on me it picks out some of the darker blues that we've got in this print and again this is the print on this is exactly the same in the buttermilk so it goes really well with those ones as well this is going to look really good with the Darley Dale denim with my very versatile and hard-working yellow shrug cardigan over the top I think that's going to work really well then we have five meters of the navy viscose marocaine which is another one that I want to try for like trashy diva style dresses with possibly embroidery on I think this one with some kind of like this colored embroidery on it's going to look lovely I promise this is navy I think it's just about reading navy on screen I really like it with this tan color as well this tan and cardigan is definitely going to get featured in this collection as are a couple of other knit pieces that I have I've got a bright yellow cardigan I've got some cream cardigans they're all going to work in really well with this as well so I'm excited to give this one a try especially as I've been wanting to recreate the trashy diva obi dress for a while so I think that's going to work really well with this one I may have enough left 
for just a solid skirt from this as well which would be really nice because another floaty skirt is never going to be a bad thing well at least in my wardrobe and then the final thing I have here is some Paul Smith suiting I've got two two and a half meter lengths I plan on doing something like the Vogue 8997 dress although I want to raise up the back neckline of that so it layers better under other things if I have enough then the little cropped new look jacket which you can see here in the kind of like fabric card that I've made for this. I think that this is going to be incredibly smart and it's not going to be something that I wear very frequently but I also think that dress worn over the butterick shirt dress out of this with then the cropped mustard shrug over the top I think that's going to look really really lovely and way more fancy than I need it to be. I don't really need pieces like this in my day-to-day -day wardrobe but it is nice to have them every now and again and they can always be dressed down in different ways so that's the last fabric I have to show you but I want to head back over to the desk and have a look at a couple of pieces that have come from my wardrobe that are already made up that are going to go really well with this collection as well So existing pieces already in my wardrobe, for example this cardigan, will 100% be featured in this collection. I have a wool suiting skirt that's also going to be featured. I have this denim skirt that I made to go with the Savannah collection. This one's going to be featured. I have a denim jacket that goes with that as well. I've also got this dress which is part of the capsule collection it's made from the Bissau rayon and cotton blend suiting from Lady McElroy there's a skirt a waistcoat and a little cropped jacket that's going to be part of the initial capsule collection which is going to get featured with all of the anaconda antithesis pieces as well some cream cardigans I've got some yellow t-shirts there is a bunch of different things that are going to get pulled from the wardrobe to add into this collection when Nicola comes over at the end of February to pick the 20 pieces for the start of the capsule collection it's going to be quite interesting to see if she can narrow it down to 20 pieces from what I've got made already. I'm going to be agreeing to just wear outfits from those 20 pieces although I have a feeling we might go up to 30 or 20 pieces of just clothing and not including any accessories. <laughs> then anything else that I make over the next three months from this anaconda antithesis collection can then be added in to those initial 20 pieces to try and create a very cohesive yet versatile and flexible wardrobe. I am really really excited about this project. I'm looking forward to seeing how many different pieces I can come up with and all the different ways that they can be worn. Do you sew in collections? Have I inspired you to have a look through some of the prints in your stash and start planning different ways of creating capsule wardrobes that go around those prints? Now obviously they don't have to be as giant and grander plans that as I have you can do a five piece you can do a ten piece you can be do a two piece because you already have a lot of things you've made up already that work with the things that you want to make would making some pieces in solid fabrics which we know I don't do often would making some of those make some of your prints work harder for you I as I say really 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 enjoy the planning side of things and I am really looking forward to having all of these pieces made up and then seeing how many different outfits and combinations I can get out of all of them and how well all of them will go together. That yellow shrug is going to be very hard working because it looks so good with everything. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section down below about the picks that I've got, the fabrics that I've chosen and would you make anything different? So if you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here.